Amen. Tayo po, in the midst of this praise and worship explosion, ay nagpapatuloy pa rin sa ating series. At ang ating series ay Thanksgiving. Tayo po ay nagpupuri at nagpapasalamat sa Panginoon. And last Sunday, I preached about um, the reasons of bakit tayo po nagpupuri sa Panginoon and I gave two reasons from the Word of God. And ito yung una, alam natin, it's about who He is. We worship God for who He is, kung sino siya sa ating mga buhay. We always sing, I will worship you for who you are. Because of who you are, I give you worship. And yung second principle na pinag-usapan na natin last Sunday ay we worship or we thanks God or we give Him praise. We give our gratitude before the Lord for what He has done. What He has done sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin. And in response to that message, I came with uh, this passage of scripture na binasa natin kanina from the book of Colossians and uh, I would like to share this afternoon, uh, this evening, dito po sa topic na to, Right Living is Thanksgiving. Right Living is Thanksgiving. Um, marami pong reasons kung bakit tayo nagpapasalamat sa Diyos. May mga reasons other than f- for who He is and for what He has done. May mga nagpapasalamat dahil meron pong ginawa ang Lord sa kanila, meron silang nareceive na blessing, and that's okay. Pero when we think of this particular passage, as far as this passage is concerned, the Lord, through Apostle Paul, gave this principle na hindi dapat nating baliwalain. Um, ano po yung dapat nating gawin in response to what He has done? Siyempre, pagpapasalamat. Ano pong mga ways, ano pong mga dapat nating gawin na pagpapasalamat natin sa Kanya? At walang iba yan, kundi yung ating pamumuhay na maayos sa harapan ng Diyos. At this point of time, we're trying to establish na the way you live to the Lord is your thanksgiving to Him. When you live right before the Lord, when you do something that is scriptural, when you do something that is um, worthy of His praise, that's something na mabibigyan po ng kapurihan ng ating Panginoon. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, in this presentation, in this passage, from this passage, I'll be sharing four motivation kung bakit yung ating pong pamumuhay ay dapat nating ayusin sa Panginoon, bakit tayo magbibigay ng pasasalamat sa harapan po ng ating Panginoon. For um, motives or out of the virtues na binigay ng Panginoon, yun yung ating motivation. Bakit natin gagawin yung bagay na yun? What, why we are doing what we're doing? Just like the other messages na tinignan natin, uh, mahalaga na mabalikan natin yung mga principle na yun. Amen. So, kung babalikan natin yan, um, ito yung importanting principle na we, we express our gratitude our thanksgiving to God by doing what is right. I mean, when you do something that is beneficial, when you do something that is uh, God-glorifying, that's your thanksgiving. Hindi mo, hindi mo na kailang i-voice out, hindi mo kailang i-status, or minsan nagpapasalamat ka sa Panginoon. But when you do something for God, ang sabi po ng Bible, kahit hindi mo pa alam sa kaliwa o sa kanan mo, hindi mo pa, pa alam yung ginagawa mo, and when you do that, that's your thanksgiving. That's your worship. Ngayon, habang ginagawa natin, merong patuloy tayong motivation. Motivation in such a way na ito yung nagpupush sa'yo kung bakit mo ginagawa na patuloy yan. And kapag hindi natin alam ang mga principle na to from the Word, pwedeng um, maligaw tayo when it comes to doing what is right. When I say maligaw, maaring mali yung motivation at maging manipulation. When I say manipulation, you are forced to do something now, out of, hindi galing sa Bible. You are forced to do this because lagot ka. You are forced to do this in order for you to have this. So parang ang motivation is something na um, in the past na ginawa sa iyo ng Panginoon. Ang motivation is something about the grace of God, about the whole thing. And these four principles, these four motivations ay from the Bible and I believe um, mas lalo nating makikita na thanksgiving sa Panginoon Every time we express, we live right sa harapan ng Diyos, naalala natin yung mga bagay po nito. First thing ay yung we do right or we live right sa harapan ng Panginoon because of the grace of God. Because of the grace of God. Um, pag, siguro parang masasanay po tayo dito sa mga, lalo na dito sa mga pag-aaral na to, na when we talk about the grace of God, hindi tayo nagsasawa. Uh, parang puro grace ang pinipreach, parang puro um, principle ang pinipreach, which is, that's the right thing to do. That's the principle of the Bible. Lahat ng ginagawa natin sa Panginoon because of the grace of God. 
So our motivation, our motive to worship or to express our thanksgiving, our righteous living sa Panginoon dahil sa biyaya ng ating Panginoon. Tingnan po natin yung passage from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. Ang sabi niyan, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Pause tayo a bit. Tinan natin yung tatlo na words or words, words dun sa verse 12. God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. Dati, tayo po'y kaaway ng Diyos. We believe, alam natin yan. Uh, wala po yan sa, sa, sa screen. Pero familiar tayo dun sa passage na we are God's enemies. When you read the book of Romans, the book of Corinthians, specifically Romans chapter um, 8 verse 5. Um, God demonstrated His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So, hindi, hindi, tayo, hindi tayo, I mean, anak ng Diyos because of sin. Dati tayo ay kabilang sa kaharian ng Panginoon. Because of sin, uh, nahiwalay tayo sa Panginoon. And um, ang sabi po ng Bible, Romans and then Corinthians, especially ng, ng Colossians, tayo ngayon ay God's chosen people. Hindi natin pinili ang Diyos, kundi tayo ang pinili ng Diyos. When you read Ephesians, when you read the book of Ephesians, uh, particular po sa passage ng um, chapter 1, chapter 1 verses 1 to, uh, chapter 1 verses 3 to 14, it talks about how God chose us, how God redeemed us, how God showed His love, how God elected us, how God chosen us in His Son. So yun yung ibig sabihin ng pinili tayo ng ating Panginoon. It's the grace of God. Hindi natin yan hiningi. We don't deserve this grace of God. When we talk about grace, alam na po natin ang ibig sabihin. Uh, Rick Warren in his book, uh, PDL, Purpose Driven Life, yung word na grace. Grace is G, God's, our riches, I, A, A at Christ's expense. Grace is G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. Ibig sabihin, pinakita ng Panginoon yung kanyang grasya sa pamamagitan ni Jesus. And when we talk about this chosen thing, we're talking about, or we trace back doon sa grasya ng ating Panginoon. Yung inawit natin kanina, grace to grace. When we see the cross, we see freedom. When we see the grave, we see Jesus. It talks about the grace of God. Chosen people, again, hindi natin pinili ang Diyos. Siya po ang pumili, pumili sa atin. Ang sabi ng Bible, holy. That's, that's so ironic. Dati hindi tayo holy. Dati tayo ay kaaway ng Panginoon. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3 says, You dearly brothers, you were God's enemies. Ang sabi doon, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. You were disobedient, puro past tense yung buhay. But now, sabi ng verse 4, you were alive because of the mercies and the grace of God. Ang tawag sa atin, holy. That's equivalent sa saint. Tayo po ay mga santo in God's sight. Maring sa ibang, sa, sa, sa normal thing, sa physical thing, maring hindi tayo kabanal-banal kasi marami tayong nakikitang kasalanan sa ating mga kapatid. Yung OSL, Operation Solid Lives, meron pong isang topic doon na look into mirror. Ang mirror natin ay Word of God. Pag sinabing mirror, Word of God, ito po yung salamin natin. At ang sabi ng iba sa atin ay tayo ay undeserving. Pero sabi ng Word of God, tayo ay holy. Tayo ay God's chosen people. So that's why it's important na we think or live right in response to this grace of God. Because of the grace of God, we are doing Right, we are expressing everything right sa harapan ng Panginoon because of that grace. Nilagay tayo sa isang estado ng Panginoon na maganda po ang ating kalalagyan. Maaring ang tao, ang ibang tao, mari magsabi sa atin na you are undeserving. You are, you don't deserve this. I mean, you have to have this or kailangan mo magkaroon ng gantong status para maging ganto ka. Pero hindi po. Sa harapan ng Diyos, sabi po nung isang kanta, who you say I am. Ang sabi ng Bible, tayo po ay forgiven. Tayo ay holy sa harapan ng Diyos. Not because of everything that we do, but because of what He has done for us. We, have, we are the righteousness of God. We are holy before God because of Jesus. Hindi po dahil sa ating righteous living. So, what we're trying to emphasize here is yung ating righteous living, 
yung ating right living before the Lord ay response natin, our gratitude before Him because of His grace. Because of the grace of God, sabi po ng verses 12, uh, verses 12 hanggang 14. Ang sabi doon, dearly love. Kapag pinag-usapan po yung love, ang naisip natin ay yung word na John 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, it talks about the love of God. Yung love na unconditional. Ibig sabihin, we're not lovable. Di ba? Di ba? I mean, pag sinabi nating lovable, pag sinabing lovable, I mean, meron siyang characteristic, meron siyang traits na naakit tayo para maging kamahal, kaibig-ibig siya. Pero when we talk about men and God, we're not lovable. At sabi po ng, um, random po yung verse na po masak sa akin ngayon, uh, sabi ng uh, Psalm 51, verse 5, Nasa sinapupunan pa lang tayo, meron na tayong kasalanan. Yun yung inherited. At pupunta tayo sa impyerno, sabi po ng Bible yan, because of sin. Pero hindi po natapos doon. Ang sabi po ng Bible, because of the grace of God, when we accepted the grace ng Panginoon, ang tawag sa atin, love. Sabihin mo sa katabi, you are loved. Sabihin po natin, you are loved by God. At yun po yung ating status, because of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why, ang sabi po ng mga statement, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, ito po yung application. Interesting po na lagi kong binabanggit sa pulpito, si Apostle Paul, one of my favorite authors sa Bible, na lagi ko namang binibridge from his uh, letters, meron po siyang 13 letters. At yung 13 letters niya, from Romans to Philemon, a halos, um, siguro 90%, isa lang po doon ang nawala, yung halos 90% doon ay um, ang content ng kanyang letter ay half ay doctrine, half ay teaching, at another half ay um, application. In response to the teaching that I taught you, in response to the teachings about the Lord Jesus Christ, about His love, about His grace, do this. Pastor Jing shared one time, yung, uh, yung Romans chapter 12, naalala niyo po yun. Therefore, di ba lagi niyo binabanggit pa, may therefore, meron siyang sinabi sa unahan. Remember that principle? Sinabi yung therefore, tapos merong in view of God's mercy. Verse 12, chapter 12, verse 1. In view of God's grace, in view of what God has done. Yun po yung ibig sabihin ng therefore. So, ibig, offer your bodies. Yeah, ito rin, same thing. So, si Paul, pag sinulat niyo yung, yung principle, from, I mean, Romans, uh, sunod ng mga salata, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, hanggang tumuloy sa Philemon, laging merong ganong principle. Principle and application. The, the grace of God and then what you will do because of the grace of God or for the grace of God. Yun, clothe yourselves with compassion. From these verses, 12 to 14, meron tayong makikitang walo na virtues na dapat nating ipakita, righteous living na ipapakita natin because of that, because of the grace of God. And when you do this, you are expressing your gratitude before Him. Sabi doon, clothe yourself with compassion. Hindi natin masyadong elaborate dyan, pero alam natin yung compassion, uh, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Ang hirap niyan. Di ba? Ang hirap gawin yung lahat ng bagay yan kapag hindi natin naintindihan yung biyaya ng Diyos sa buhay ng bawat isa sa atin. Mahirap yan. Di ba? Ang, sabi po, ang sabi po ng sumunod na statement, uh, sabi ng verse 13, um, ayaw. Sabi ng verse 13, okay, verse 13 says, dito lang mo sa, sa Bible ko, verse 13, um, bear with each other, bear with each other, and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. So, uh, ang, ang principle na sinasabi po doon, yung idea na bearing with one another, that's right, that's it. Bear with one another, with each other, and forgive. Diba? Kung babalikan natin yung principle, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bear with one another, forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another, forgive as the Lord Pansin na yung, as the Lord forgave you. Balikan natin yung, uh, tingnan natin yung as the Lord. I-compare po natin sa as God's chosen people. Yung mga statement na yun, do this, clot yourselves, bear with one another, compassion, blah, 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 and everything, forgive as the Lord. 
as God's chosen people, ang conclusion, do this because of the grace of Christ sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin. Ang hirap po mag-extend ng forgiveness, ang hirap po mag-extend ng love sa ibang tao na parang the way we think or the way we describe them, based on our own righteousness, ay unlovable na tulad din natin before. Pero when you experience the love of Christ, kahit mahirap, parang napupush tayo, motivate tayo to do that thing as part of our thanksgiving to God. When you do right, when you live right, when you ex- exercise these virtues, napap- nabibigyan po ng glory ang Panginoon kasi it, it takes effort. Kasi ang hirap niyan. Lalo pag sinful nature ang pinag-usapan. May mga struggles. Pero just remember, our, our life before, before, I mean, experiencing the grace of Christ, wala, hindi natin maraming experience an. Pero salamat sa Panginoon dahil na-experience yung ganun bagay at we can express this, our gratitude to God by, by really doing what is right because of His grace sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin. Sabi po ng 14, pang, ito pong pang walo, and all of these virtues put on love, yun yung pinakamahirap, put on love which, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Parang ibig sabihin kasi niyan, kasi nababanggit yung each other together unity, Ang, ang point ni Apostle Paul dito sa mga Colossians, hindi pwedeng makita yung mga virtues na yun at the same time ay um, walang action dahil hindi yan obvious sa mga mananampalataya. Oh sorry, obvious yan sa mga hindi mananampalataya. Para magbago, mabago yung senaryo, lagyan natin ng love na nag, nag, naging maayos yan at nakikita natin yung pagkilos ng Diyos sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin and we're thinking of the grace of Christ. Sabi po ng isang author na dapat po nating tingnan ngayon, si John MacArthur po yan, If I'm not showing grace, have I forgotten the grace I have been shown? If I'm not showing grace, if I'm not extending love, if I'm not, I'm not extending compassion, if I'm not extending kindness, humility, if I'm not extending forgiveness, at kung wala akong effort para magbear with one another, Pag wala akong, mag, wala akong effort to extend love and forgiveness, have I forgotten the grace I have been shown? So parang i-rephrase yan, pag hindi, tayo, hindi natin na-extend yung ganung bagay sa iba, hindi natin naranasan. Pag pinag-usapan po yung love, ang hirap pong magbigay ng love kapag hindi natin naranasan. Ang hirap pong mag-extend ng grace sa ibang tao kapag hindi natin naranasan yung grace ng Panginoon. So we always see this thing as motivation. We are motivated by what we have received. Freely, grace to grace, sabi nung kanta kanina, freely have give, the Lord given to us. The Lord gave to us. And that's why in response to that, our gratitude sa Panginoon ay nagbibigay din tayo sa iba because of the grace of Christ. Hindi dahil sa makulit siya, hindi dahil sa kung ano, para bigyan niya nila ulit tayo, but because of tayo mismo nakasumpong ng biyaya ng Panginoon sa ating mga buhay. Kaya mas madali pong magbigay sa Panginoon. Kapag Panginoon ang pinag-usapan, ang daling magbigay. Bakit? Kasi siya ang unang nagbigay sa atin. In the first place, hindi atin yan, yung pera natin, hindi atin. Binigyan tayo ng Panginoon, di ba? Just remember this principle when we give our tithes and offering, everything sa Panginoon. Basta Panginoon ang pinag-usapan, give up na tayo because that's for the Lord. Kasi alam natin, meron siyang binigay sa atin. At konti lang, parang portion lang na ibibigay natin sa Kanya. Diba? Right? That's righteous living. Pero itong pinag-uusapan natin, it talks about showing grace to others and with others. So that's why we remember the grace of Christ sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin. Amen. First, we express our gratitude to God by doing or living according to the principle of the Bible, doing what is right because of the grace of God. Secondly, makikita natin, ang ating pong pamumuhay sa Panginoon, ginagawa natin ng mabuti, ang, ang basihan, ang motivation, secondly, ay through the peace of Christ. Anong kanagnay ng peace of Christ? Sabi po ng verse 15, Let the peace of Christ, sabi po doon, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since you are members of one body. Um, tingnan natin uli yung principle again. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. 
Since you are, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Parang ang tingnan, ang sarap pong intindihin yung principle. Dito kasi sa mga verses 15 hanggang pababa, mapapansin natin yung mga words na be thankful. From verses 15 to 17, yung idea ng be thankful sa harapan ng Diyos because of this grace ng Panginoon. So kung titignan natin yung verses 12 to 14, it talks about the grace of God. God's chosen people, we are holy, we are love. At eto, second occurrence ng word na Christ. Okay? Ang sabi po ng principle, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Another virtue, allowing the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Anong ibig sabihin ng rule? When we say rule, we are talking about lordship. When we talk about lordship, we're talking about servant on the other hand. Pag servant, we are not allowing ourselves to be ruled by anything na hindi natin alam. Diba? Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, in your hearts. Since you are members of one body, you were called to peace. So, babalikan natin yung ating estado ng buhay. Anong calling natin? Calling natin ay kapayapaan. At dapat, ang, ipasa, ang mag-overwhelm ng ating sarili ay yung peace ng Panginoon. And when you do that, you are expressing your thanksgiving sa Panginoon. Pag hindi natin nararanasan yung peace ng Lord, ibang bagay po yun. When we talk about peace at sa context po ng buong Bible, kaya may word na be thankful, bakit kasama yung be thankful? So, um, as, as Paul, Paul elaborates his idea here, ang suggestion is, in everything that you do, laging merong thanksgiving. So, itong verse, hindi lang allowing you, your peace to rule in your hearts, kasama yung nagpapasalamat ka. Siyempre, ang, ang uh, antonyms ng peace ay sabihin natin, hindi war, parang ganun. And uh, when we talk about peace, especially peace of Christ, iba po yung bagay na peace of Christ and peace with God. Uh, when I say yung, yung preposition na with and of, pag we of, it, talking about, it talks about peace ng Panginoon. Pag peace with God ay kapayapaan kasama ng Panginoon. So, when, when Paul elaborated this idea sa book of uh, Romans, kung meron kayong time na basahin, Romans chapter 5, since we have the peace with God, uh, according to that statement, at i-compare natin dito, isa lang po ang ibig sabihin niya. Ang ginamit na original po doon ay hindi po sa original language na of and with. Isa lang po ang ibig sabihin sa original. Peace ng ating Panginoon na kasama araw-araw sa ating buhay. And when you allow that peace of Christ ang mag-motivate to do what is right, kahit minsan, sobra tayong hirap, sobrang unpeaceful, sobrang struggle, sobrang stress, burden, kumukunot na yung noon natin. Dahil sa sobrang stress at nai- naisip natin yung ganun bagay, makakapagpatagumpay tayo. Kasi we remember kung ano yung peace na dila na sa atin ng ating Panginoon. Mahirap din po pag hindi natin naramdaman yung peace ng Lord. It's hard to express that. At nanonotice yan ng ibang tao. That's why it's good na pag meron tayong naranasang problema, sitwasyon, just allow the peace of Christ. Just remember how God showed His peace sa buhay natin. Ang sabi doon, you were called to peace. You were not called to such thing as hatred or anything that is bad, that is negative. So that's why when you live right sa harapan ng Panginoon, you live right through the peace of God sa pamamagitan ng kapayapaan ng ating Panginoon. Siguro nakita nyo na po itong image na to. I've showed this mga matagal na pong mga panahon. Um, siguro last year, um, there was this painting contest. Yung painting contest na yon ay, um, ang topic ay peace. Uh, as in, kapayapaan, hindi po ibon. Kapayapaan. At alam nyo po ba ang, ang mga nag-participate, magagaling sa, sa arts, Ang ginawa nila, nagpaint sila ng, ng rainbow and everything, basta flowers, mas magaganda. Pero ang nanalo po ay etong portrait na to. At siguro hindi natin masyado mapansin, um, LED kasi hindi lalampas yung ano. Anyway, kung inyong mapapansin siguro, meron pong maliit na kulay puti sa gitna. Napapansin nyo ba? Ito po yun. Ano ba yun? Um, merong maliit na puti sa gitna, lalabas din po yan mamaya. Um, yan po yung ibon. Yung ibon ay payapang-payapang natutulog in the midst of that, pwede natin sabihin, chaotic situation. Storm, thunderstorm, 
or mahirap na sitwasyon. Parang ganun yung point. Payapang payapa siya, di ba? Payapang payapa yung kanyang I mean, sitwasyon. Walang walang struggle, di ba? At yun yung pwede nating tingnan na mapapansin natin sa mga principle. Sorry about that. Um, kaya kung babalikan natin yung, yung principle at peace ng ating Panginoon, mas lalo pong encouraging na the Lord is so good na binigay niya sa atin yung kapayapaan sa buhay po ng bawat isa. Kaya payapaan na hindi po nagmamaliw. Kapayapaan na wala pong kapantay. Diba? In the midst of situation na mahirap, sabi po ng principle, makikita natin yung kapayapaan in, in, in the midst of trouble, kapayapaan ng ating Panginoon. At hindi yun nabibiling kapayapaan, hindi yun nababayaran ng pera, at yun po'y matatagpuan sa presensya po ng ating Panginoon. And, and nagpapasalamat tayo na, Lord, salamat kasi in the midst of everything that I'm experiencing, I can still find peace sa inyong harapan dahil yun po ay regalo ng Diyos sa inyong pagkatawag sa atin ng ating Panginoon. Amen. Salamat po Lord, sa, salamat Lord sa inyong kapayapaan sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa amin. Amen. Hallelujah. So, first thing, you express your gratitude before the Lord. Lang sabi po doon, by doing what is right. At ang ating motivation first, because of the grace of God. Because of the grace of Christ. Pangalawa, we always express this as part of our thanksgiving. Gratitude sa Panginoon. Um, by doing what is right. By doing what is right. Um, uh, sa pamamagitan po ng kapayapaan ng ating Panginoon. At yun po ay principle na talagang dapat po nating tandaan. Pangatlo, um, sorry po sa PowerPoint, nag-error siguro. Anyway, siguro pwede na lang tulungan ni Jun Ray. Um, you express your gratitude by God to God by doing what is right. Thirdly, ito po yung dapat nating tingnan at dapat po nating salaminin sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin by the word of Christ. Because of the grace of God, the grace of Christ, through the peace of Christ, thirdly, by the word of Christ. So, ang ating pattern ng living ay according sa word ng Panginoon. Hindi sa principle ng iba. Hindi sa righteousness ng iba. So, when we do right, when we, do, when we live right sa Panginoon, when we do righteous acts, when we express humility, when we express freedom, ginagawa natin yun base, hindi sa ginagawa natin, kundi base sa word of God. By the word of God. Sabi ng verse uh, 16, and it's clear then, there's Romans, ah, sorry, sa Colossians, Colossians chapter um, 3, verse 16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach, admonish one another, one another with all wisdom as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. Kanina, the grace of God, the grace of Christ. Ngayon, kanina, again, the peace of Christ, ngayon, the Word of Christ. I believe with all my heart what the Bible is saying right now is that ang motivation na ginagawa natin ay hindi basis sa atin, basis sa Panginoon. Sabi ni Paul, imitate me as I imitate Christ. When you imitate me, you're not imitating, imitating Paul, you are imitating what Paul imitated, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. So we are patterning our life, our righteous living sa salita ng ating Panginoon. Nasabi na natin dito na hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na wag yan kapatid. Hindi yan maganda, tinan mo ginagawa ko. Kasi nasabi na natin na kapag ginawa natin yun, that's self-righteous. Ang tama is, Lord, wag yan kapatid. Kasi hindi yan yung sinasabi ng word. Hindi natin pwedeng saliminin ang ating sarili sa, sa iba. Hindi natin pwedeng gawin yung ating sarili as mirror ng ibang buhay. Dapat ang mirror natin ay Word of Christ. Word of God. Salita ng ating Panginoon. At wala na pong iba. Kasi when we talk about this Word ng ating Panginoon, ang sarap pong isipin. Ang sarap pong, hindi lang po imaginein, ang sarap pong tingnan kung ano po ang nagagawa ng Word of God sa buhay ng bawat isa sa atin. I've shared this illustration matagal na pong panahon. Um, Ang exact pong presentation nito ay, um, kailan ba to? Um, April, April 22, 2018. Naalala niyo po ito, sinare ko po sa inyo. 
dito ko po rin sinare sa fourth service, sa second fourth service, conversation na nakuha ko sa Facebook ng projectionist natin ngayon, kay Jun Ray, uh, post siya ni Jun Ray ng mga nakaraan. Naalala mo Jun Ray? Praise God. Ang sabi po doon, ewan ko naalala niyo, uh, conversation nito sa Facebook, hello, hi, hello, sabi nung lala- lalaki po yung kulay blue. Actual conversation yan. Pwede magtanong, ano yon? May boyfriend ka na ba? Wala, ayoko mag-boyfriend. Next. Alam mo, ganda po ng statement nila. Tignan mo natin. Ang sabi doon, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for a man, It's not good that man should be alone, I will make him a helper fit for him. May Genesis, di ba? May word of God na kasama. Pero sabi ng sabi babae, Pero hindi kita type. I mean, di, di kita gusto, ayoko. Ang sabi ng babae, Ang sabi ng lalaki, Nababasa niyo ba? Whoever does not love, does not know me. Tama ba? Know God. Because God is love. May, may, may laging verse. Di ba? Naalala niyo po yung mga principle na yan. Next. Ang sabi po ng principle, paano ka makakasiguro na di ka nagsisinungaling na totoo yung sinasabi mo? Ang sabi po ng lalaki, for the mouth speaks what the heart, the heart is full of. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Di ba? Sabi po ng sumunod na conversation, are you sure? Paano makakasiguro na loyal ka? What if di, ka, di lang pala ako ang nililigawan mo? May iba pa. Heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will never pass away. Nasabi ko na po sa inyo to, naalala nyo, April 22, tinunan ko kasi sa, sa archive ko ng preaching, April 22, ginamit ko yan. So, binalik ko lang. Di ba? At ang sabi doon, sa dinami-dami naman ng babae yan, sabi ng babae, bakit naman ako? Ika nga, madaming isda sa dagat. Many women. Do noble things, but you surpass them all. Laging may kasamang verse. Di ba? Uh, magandang gayahin to. Ay, di ba? Di ba guys, magandang gayahin to. Di ba? Sumunod, sumunod. Sabi doon, Anong nakita mo sa akin at ako ang nagustuhan mo? That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they will become one flesh. Wow. Ang sabi ng babae, tinan natin yung sinabi ng babae. Bakit ang dami mong alam sa Bible verses? Sabi niyo nga doon, na Bible verses, keep this book of the law oh, always in your, in your lips, meditate in the day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it, then you will be prosperous and successful. Laging my verse. Sabi po ng sumunod na statement, parang yan lang ata, kinakain mo araw-araw ah. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Sumunod the statement. Wow naman, love na love mo talaga si, Lord. si God. Ang galing. Taste and see what the Lord, the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in Him. Okay, okay. Siguro bigyan mo muna ako ng time para mag-isip. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, anything is, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about or such thing. Galing. Sumunod. Oh my G. I love you na. Ang sabi niya, Amen. Revelation 22 verse 21. Yes, thank you Lord. Napatank you Lord yung babae. Sumagot na sila. It's, it's a kind of, parang, parang joke ng konte. Pero tamang conversation. Hindi ko alam kung ginawa lang yun sa conversation. Um, hindi natin na, na-trace kung totoo talaga yun. Pero, Siguro maaring ginawa lang or maaring totoo. Pero ang point is, mayroon pong power kapag ginagawa natin yung ating pamumuhay basis sa word. Ang purpose po ng Operation Solid Lives ay makafocus tayo sa salita ng Panginoon. Lahat ng ating ginagawa basis sa word of God. And when we live according to the word, nabibigyan lagi ng glory ang Panginoon. Lagi pong napapasalamatan ang Panginoon sa lahat ng ginagawa natin sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin. Meron akong version niya nung ako po ay elementary, grade 5. Grade 5 years old. Grade 5, ang grade 5, ang lang taon ako noon. Wow, grade 5. Meron akong sinulatan na babae. Sa dulo na aking sulat, kulay pula pa, laging may kasulat na ganyan. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk you face to face so that our joy will be complete. Ang ganda, di ba? So, Christian na rin ako noon, pero para ma-encourage yung nililigawan ko na na parang nagpapasikat ako na alam ko yung word, ginamit ko yan. May cross-reference pa. 
Sabi po ng 3 John, uh, walang chapter yan, 13 and 14, I have much to write to you, but I don't want to use paper and ink or pen or ink. I hope to see you soon and we will talk face to face. Naging effective po yun. Sinagot po ako ng babae. Grade 5, imagine po nun. Grade 5. Grade 5. Pero hindi kami po nagkatuluyan nun. Anyway, um, the Lord is so good indeed. When you use the Word of God, kahit minsan mali yung context, Kasi ang pagsinabing context, hindi yan yung sinasabi ng Word of God. Yung word na Amen na tinukoy po ng, ng lalaki kanina, Revelation 22 verse 21, yung Amen doon, Maranatha, darating na ang Panginoon. Yes, ka, the Lord is coming. Amen. Hindi yun Amen sa panliligaw. Pero naging effective doon sa babae. What we're trying to establish is our righteous living, the way we live sa Panginoon, ay ating pagpapasalamat sa Kanya when we do right according to the Word of God. Tulad ng minention ko kanina, hindi ko pa, pwede pong iladlad ang buhay ko po sa inyo at gayahin niyo po ako. Maaring nasasabi ko na do this because ginagawa ko to. Pero above all, ang sinusunod ko lang na pattern din ng buhay ko, ng buhay namin mga pastors, ng bawat isa sa atin ay pattern din ng Word of God. Kung ang buhay ko po ay hindi nakapattern sa Word of God, wag niyo na pong sundin. Pero alam naman natin na talagang tayo po ay may struggle. Minsan hindi natin nagagawa yun. Pero salamat sa Panginoon dahil as we, I mean, grow in Christ, nakikita natin na ito mali pala. So, ibig sabihin, dito pa rin ang basihan sa Word. So, we express that thanksgiving sa Panginoon dahil sa ating paggawa ng mabuti at ang ating paggawa ng mabuti, our righteous living, doing things for the glory of God ay dahil po sa salita ng ating Panginoon. Because of the grace of Christ, because or through the peace of Christ, through the word of Christ, or I mean, lastly, ito po yun, in the name of Christ. Parang um, overwhelmed tayo ng Christ ngayong, ngayong, ngayong gabi. Kanina po, I, we're talking about the, the, the grace of Christ, the peace of Christ, the word of Christ, at ngayon, the name of Christ. Sabi po ng verse 17, it's clear there, whatever you do, it's, it's part of con- con- conclusion thing, and whatever you do, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, ibig sabihin, everything that you do before the Lord, whatever you desire to live in a righteous thing na sa Panginoon, do it all. At ang motivation, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks, giving thanks to, to the Father, to God the Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Ibig sabihin, ginagawa mo yan ng bagay na yan para sa Panginoon. Hindi mo yan ginagawa or what you're doing, what your righteous thing na ginagawa, sa pangin- sa, na ginagawa mo ay hindi pakitan tao. ba? When you are expressing your thanksgiving to God, you are expressing it, you are doing what is right according or for or in the name of Jesus Christ so that the name of Jesus Christ will be lifted up. I've been mentioning from this pulpit and all, all the pastors here, lagi nating sinasabi na it's, it's not about us, it's not about this worship team, it's not about this church, it's about Jesus. Kaya parang lagi nating sinasabi kung, kung si Jesus Christ ay nakopo dito or kung si Jesus Christ ay worship leader dito, ano kayang gagawin natin? Kung si Jesus Christ ay nakatingin sa ating tahanan, sa bahay, na wala, wala tayong kasama, si Jesus Christ yung audience doon, ano kayang gagawin natin? I, I mean, hindi lang, I think, for sure, ang gagawin natin is we will do our very best. Sabi ng statement, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all, not for the sake of your parents. Maaring, okay din po yun. Not for the sake of your pastor, not for the sake of your boss. Minsan may ganun, di ba? Ginagawa natin para sa kanila. Pero if we are growing sa Panginoon, what we're doing, righteous living, ay ginagawa natin sa pangalan ng ating Panginoon. Mayroon mga verses sa Bible. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Diba? Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. Wives, submit to your husband just Christ gave Himself to us as a suffering, as atoning sacrifice. Ephesians chapter 5. Lahat po yun laging may nakakabit na pangalan ng ating Panginoon. It's all about the name of Jesus Christ. It's all about His name. 
Kasi pag na-miss natin yung name ng ating Panginoon, na-miss natin yung name na yan, um, siguro pwede natin isuggest, umuwi na tayo. It's, it's not about, it's, it's, it's about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi po ng isang author, St. Augustine, part po siya ng, ng uh, early Christians, part ng church history. Sabi po ng St. Augustine, Christ is not valued at all unless He is valued above all. Christ is not valued at all unless He is valued above all. We are talking about the name of Jesus. We are talking about no other name. Sabi ng Acts chapter 4, verse 12, wala pong binigay na pangalan sa sanlibutan para isa ikaliligtas ng sino man, kundi ang pangalan lang ng ating mong Panginoong Yesus. That's why when we are talking about the name of Jesus Christ, don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself kung saan ka comfortable. Just do your best. Ang sabi po ng statement, do your all, whatever you do, do it all. I mean, when we talk about all as in, above all, without limitations, regardless of what people may think or may say sa ginagawa mo, as long as God is glorified, as long as that name of Jesus is exalted, as long as that the beautiful name of Jesus Christ is lifted up and worship, parang ang salapong purihin ng ating Panginoon dahil yun lang po yung ating ginagawa. So every time na meron tayong ginagawa sa Panginoon, as part of our thanksgiving, do it, do it for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ or in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ dahil alam natin, mabibigyan natin siya ng papuri sa, sa uh, ating buhay. Nihiling ko po ang bawat isa na tumayo. Let's just meditate upon this message and I believe na as we meditate upon His Word this evening, makikita po natin yung patuloy na pagkilos ng Panginoon sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin. His name is wonderful. His name is beautiful. And we, when we pattern our life before Him, when we do something that is according to the Word, according to the, the peace of Christ, according to the grace of God, and for the name of Christ, alam po natin, may struggle pero nagtatagumpay. Merong hirap pero napagtatagumpayan at nakakalipas. Because God is all always there for us na lagi po nating nakakasama sa lahat ng ating ginagawa. Amen. Tulad po ng ating binabanggit, it's, it's different thing kapag pinag-usapan po yung struggle. Pero kapag tayo face to face sa kabutihan ng ating Panginoon, lahat po yun nawawala. Dahil nakakalimutan, ultimately nawawala, nawawala kasi na, natatabunan ng glory ng ating Panginoon sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin. In this remaining uh, time, before tayong umalis, don't limit yourself. You just express your thanksgiving sa Panginoon. Explore, I mean, expressing your thanksgiving sa Lord because of His grace, because of His peace, because of His, wow, His word, and because of His name that will be lifted up. Oh, let's just worship the Lord this, this, this evening. Hallelujah.